praise reports we've been seeing around the world. Um, I know Bishop Lewis has been sharing many of them about the South Georgia Church of God and how faithful their people are and how they've been having record numbers come in. And God is still good and God is still blessing us. You see what the devil will be praying for? Like I like to say all the time, God will make it good and it'll be a blessing. I want to uh, take this time and I want to tell you that uh, I got our district pastor here, Pastor Danny Joyner, who pastored here at McCray Church of God for many, many years. I think he won for about nine years here. And I was so blessed to step in and take his place when he left. I thank God for that. Uh, I believe he's got an encouraging word of God for you today. I want to go over uh, and remind you about our offering to Israel. It's the last Sunday in April, April the 26th. If you'd like to give to that, you're welcome to send it in. Before we get into the word tonight, I want to go over a couple of our prayer lists. And we put a new prayer request up. But I really want to just take a moment. And I want to uh, encourage you to pray for each and every one of them. Brother Gerald is coming home tomorrow. And they're going to send a home nurse home with him. Y'all pray for Miss Alice. She's got to put up with him. But uh, he is coming home. And that's a praise report in itself. Uh, Jackie Poole, y'all please remember to pray for her. And I want to take a moment tonight. As many of our church members know, we have been praying for Miss Helen Churchwell for a long time. And uh, I got the news as I was coming in church today that she's not doing very well. I want you to please lift her up in your prayers this week. Remember her family. Remember to ask God to give her husband guidance and all this decision making. Uh, Mr. Ken Williams, I want y'all to still remember him. He's still battling cancer. Uh, he actually got his results back. The cancer's not growing, but he still has it, but it's not growing, and that's a blessing from God. But we're believing in a full healing. Please remember Miss Zelda Seabolt. Please remember Mr. Ralph Renfro. And uh, I want you to remember the Bass and the Yamas family. We all know that uh, if you go to church here, that Miss Sharon Bass lost her father this week. Uh, please lift them up in your prayer. Please remember Mr. Paul Gay, Jesse Joyner. Miss Crystal Bedlock, and I want to take a minute to just hit on that. Uh, Crystal is one of my cousins. She is an RN, I think, in Florida. Uh, she's, I'm not sure how far along in the pregnancy she is, but she is having some of the symptoms of COVID-19, and they have tested her for it. The first time it has come back negative, and they said that may be because she's pregnant. It might not read right. But I'm believing that God is still going to heal her and that second test is going to come back negative and she's going to have no more symptoms. Please remember Miss Sadie Strong. Please remember Miss uh, Mr. Julian and Miss Carol Strong. I'm going to tell you something. Brother Strong has been in the ministry many years and uh, we went to see his wife the other day and right before church, me and Pastor Danny did. And I'm going to tell you, we had church right there that morning. And just that few 20, 15, 20 minutes, we stayed there. And uh, Miss Carol is still strong. She's still fighting this cancer. We're praying for a blessing. Please remember Miss Gloria Ballinger. Remember our local businesses and all of our government, our leaders from our district pastors to our state leaders to our general overseers to our international leaders. Remember all of these guys because I'm going to tell you something. Every decision they make is a tough one. None of these decisions are coming easy for anyone right now. And please remember to lift each and every one of them up in your prayers. Lift our governor up and our president up. Ask for a blessing over them. Ask for God's leadership to come and guide them. I want to take a moment. I'm going to go to the word of prayer. And I'm going to turn it right over to Pastor Danny and Miss Rhonda. She's going to sing a few, I think. But uh, remember, God still loves you. And we are in the middle of Holy Week. And that should be joy right there because we know that Friday is coming. We're celebrating Passover today. We know the cross is coming. But you know what's even better than that? Sunday morning, our God still arose. Our Christ still rose from the dead to save our sins. I thank God that he is victorious today. Let us go to a word in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you do. Lord, we know that you're going to know what Pastor Danny is. He brings
praise the Lord today. God, Lord, this run as she sings. Father, we're praying for a blessing over each and every one that's on this prayer list. God, we ask that you move in their life and meet every need that's on that list. God, and for those who are unspoken out amongst us, I pray right now for a coverage of protection. Meet that need tonight. Father, I thank you for each one that has to give and is still giving and for those who doesn't have to give. God, I pray that you continue to bless them, Lord. Lord, I know some of them may be facing the unemployment line, but God, you are still in control. And I'm praying right now, and I seek your face in knowing that we have comfort in you and peace in you. God, I ask that you touch each and every one of them that may have to sit out of their job for weeks right now. I ask that you give them comfort and peace. And Lord, if they have to file for unemployment, I pray, God, that that check comes quick, that they don't have to wait two or three weeks for them. That they're able to continue life as normal. God, I ask that you touch each and every one. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.
heavenly crown because I'm clinging to the old rugged cross. This is Passion Week, as Brother Brad said, and it's a week that's started off the week with a, a day of celebration. This celebration was huge, and the Holy Week, Passion Week, also represents the passion that Jesus willingly, willingly went to the cross for you and me. He went to the cross for our sins, the sins of all the people. This past Sunday was commonly referred to as Palm Sunday, and it commemorates the day that Jesus rode through the crowd. Listen to this. Jesus rode through the crowd as a victor. They praised him. They worshiped him as a conquering king. The palm branches spoke of the victory, the triumph, the celebration and joy. You see, in the cultures of Jesus' day, we need to understand that the parade, the palm branch parade that Jesus was enjoying was equivalent to our ticker taking prophetic parades of today, to the fireworks and the victory celebrations of a conqueror or a champion. These branches represented that the enemy is defeated. The good guys have won. This is what Jesus experienced as he entered into Jerusalem. Oh, what a glorious day that was. However, however, from here, Jesus' experience will definitely not be a celebration. The title of my message tonight is Jesus Chose the Nails for Us. If you have your Bibles handy, turn to Colossians chapter 2. I'll read the scripture in this in just a moment. But what I want you to see is that during this week, Jesus had a rough life. We, we sometimes think about we have a bad life. We think we have a bad week. But let me show you, let me tell you real quickly about a bad week that Jesus had. He was betrayed by a close friend. He had the last supper with the followers where he gets to tell them about what's going to happen. He's arrested. He's lied on. He's tried and found guilty even though he was completely innocent. Then these five days, he was beaten, crucified, and buried in a tomb. All in less than five days. However, he took it all for you and for me. He took it all for you and me. Colossians 2 and 13 through 14 reads this way. Maybe a little different translation than you are used to, but I'll read it to you again out of another translation in a few moments. But here's what it says. You were dead. That's us. Because you were sinful and not God's people. But God let Christ make you alive when he forgave all our sins. God wiped out the charges that they were against us for disobeying the law of Moses. He took them away and he nailed them to the cross. You see, Jesus chose the nails. Jesus chose to remain on the cross for you and I. Today is Wednesday. It's Passover day. The truth of the matter is, Friday is almost here. But Jesus was going to be busy right up to the cru crucifixion. He wasn't sitting around. He knew what was coming. He wasn't sitting around to hiding in the corner. Let me tell you, don't let this virus, don't let this world make you hide in the corner. You serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. He's real for you and I. All we have to do is hold on to Him. See, on Thursday, Jesus had communion, the last supper with His disciples. He told them what was about to happen and even told them that one in the room would betray Him. The fact is, that the betrayal had already begun. He went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. During prayer, he was arrested. He endured six trials, even into the early mornings of Friday. He was mocked by the religious leaders. He was mocked by the Roman soldiers. And on Friday, he was going to be crucified on Golgotha. Jesus endured all of this so that you and I that we might become children of God. So let's take up with Friday. 
Oh, Friday is best described as a day of horror. A day that if you'd have been there, that as a witness, you'd have never be able to forget. You're standing along the lines. You're standing on the road as it goes up to Golgotha. You begin to hear a murmur. The murmur is, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. The truth of the matter is, you probably wouldn't even have recognized him if they didn't tell you who he was because of the torture that he had suffered through. See, torture that would have killed most men. At this point in time, Jesus was so weak, he needed assistance to carry the cross up Galbathus Hill. And yet, the situation was to get worse. Not better. He was about to turn even worse over everything that he's already struggled with. Jesus struggled up to the top of Galgotha. To a place where the unthinkable was about to take place. An innocent man was about to be crucified. Galgotha called the place of the skull. A place of death. You see, nothing ever happened on Galgotha but death. And that's where Jesus was. When Jesus arrived, already beaten, already just a, not much left in him, the Roman soldiers, for some reason, I can just see it in my mind, the Roman soldiers, instead of having any kind of compassion, I see them pushing him to the ground. He wasn't going to fight with them. He didn't have anything left in the human sense to fight with. I can see that Roman soldier pushing him to the ground, stretching his arms out against the cross spring. One presses a knee against the forearm and puts a spike in a hand. You would think that Jesus would turn away. He would look the opposite direction. I believe with all my heart that Jesus turned his head and he faced the nail and he faced the soldier just as he lifted a hammer and strike Jesus could have stopped him. Yes, yes, Jesus could have stopped him. He could have flexed his bicep. He could have clenched his fist. Jesus could have resisted. But he chose not to. Can you hear the hammer as it rings and hits the nails? His hand Begin, the skin begins to rip. Blood begins to pour out. And it makes me go back to the same old question. Why? Why didn't Jesus resist? Why didn't he resist? It's important for us to know tonight why he didn't resist. There was a reason he didn't resist. You see, he could have called 10,000 angels and they had come to his defense. But he chose not to. Why didn't those hands that had healed the blind, his hand had healed the blind. He had healed the sick. His hand had made the lame to walk again. His hand and his voice had raised the dead. Why? Why did they not resist? Simply because tonight and simply because then he loves you Amen. and he loves me. He didn't resist because we needed him to complete the task his father had sent him to do. But I'm going to tell you something now. I, I think Jesus saw something else. He laid that head over. He could see the nail. He could see that Roman soldier's hand. He could see that hammer as he was about to come down. Oh yes, he could see all of that. He could see it. And I'm sure, but I want to tell you tonight that I believe with all my heart that Jesus saw something else. As he looked that way, I believe he saw the hand of God. He saw the hand of God that's a powerful hand. A hand that formed Adam out of clay. A hand that had split the Red Sea. No wonder the psalmist proclaims in Psalms 44, 2 and 3, he says, You drove out the nations with your hand. It was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance. All oh, the hands of Jesus. The hands of Jesus that brings deliverance. The hands that brought inspiration as he taught the disciples. Hands of servant as he washed the disciples' feet. But most of all, the hands of Jesus represents salvation. 
Matthew 1 and 21 tells us that at Jesus' birth, the prophecy was given. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Oh, that's great. But it gets better. In this scripture, it gets better. It says, for he, Jesus, shall save his people from their sin. You see, it was not the nails that held him to the cross. We think it was. We, we put up crosses and we'll put nails in them. We think the nails held him to the cross. But that really wasn't what held him to the cross. What held Jesus to the cross was his love for you and me. Woo, that's such great love. That held him to the cross. Yes, the nails had its purpose. As they was driven through his hands. I want you to think a little different. Now, I may not, this may not be completely scriptural. But I want you to listen to me. I want you to imagine in your mind as they're driving that nail through his hands that behind his hand is a piece of paper and it's just a long piece of paper and that nail goes through Jesus' hand. That nail goes into that paper. That nail goes into that cross. Let me tell you what that paper is. Let me tell you the importance of that paper. It was a list for the, all the world to see. It was a long list. It wasn't a short list. It was a list that contained all of our sins. Every lie Every bit of lust, every bit of greed, every time you had a bad attitude, it was always going to have a bad attitude. It was on the list. Every time you made a bad decision, and that's just to name a few of the things that was there. Let me tell you right now, let me tell you, how would you like for your sin to be broadcast through for the whole world to see? Our sin was there. As the blood began to pour out of his hand, this blood began to cover that piece of paper. This blood began to cover the sins listed there. The Bible says in one place it said that the blood of Jesus blotted out our sins. Colossians 2 and 14, again a different interpretation. A translation threads, He has forgiven you all your sins. He has utterly wiped out the written evidence of broken commandments which always hung over our heads and has been completely annulled it by nailing it to the cross. Let me tell you what the blood that shed from Jesus' hand, the blood from Jesus' head, the blood from Jesus' side, let me tell you what that blood did for you and I. It covered our sin. That's why Jesus refused to close his fist. He saw the list. He knew that the listing represented Danny's failure. It represents your failures. And he knew that the price of sin was death. He knew we was the source of those sins. He knew that were our sins. And, but he also knew this. Praise God, he knew this much. We could not fix this sin problem. We couldn't do it. But guess what? Jesus knew he could. He knew he could fix it. So he chose the nails so that we could spend eternity with him and with his Father in heaven. You see, Jesus knew how important it was for him to die on the cross. He knew the purpose of the nails. He knew the purpose of the cross. He knew the purpose of everything that went on, including the pain that he endured. So he spilled his blood. His sacrifice hid my sins and your sins from God the Father. You see, the same hand that calmed the sea calmed the guilt in our soul. The same hand that cleansed the temple cleanses our heart. This hand is the hand of God. So in closing tonight, today Calvary separates the world into two classes of people. It's not the rich and the poor. It's not by color. Calvary sets, separates the world into two groups of people. The saved or the lost. Which group are you in tonight? You see, the sole purpose of Christ's life was that he might die on the cross as the perfect Lamb of God. By the shedding of his blood, he became a substitute in my place and in your place. You see, his body was broken for us. His blood was shed for us. 
You and I must accept Jesus' death upon the cross as our substitute, for there is no other way. Yes, Jesus chose to allow the Roman soldiers to nail him to that cross. It was his love that kept him there. It was his love for us, for you, and for me. You see, as the hand of Jesus opened for the nails, the doors of heaven are open for you tonight. The only thing that is stopping you from going through the doors of heaven tonight is forgiving ourselves. We must forgive ourselves. We must ask for his forgiveness. You see, we have to believe and receive our forgiveness. Because if you don't, it's like being a millionaire. And having a million dollars in the bank but lets you live in poverty. Tonight you can live in the glory of heaven. Yes, Jesus died on that cross that Friday for us. But praise God, it did not end there on Sunday. Again, for you and I, make it personal. Again, for you and I, He arose so that we could have eternal life. So I ask you tonight, will this be your day of resurrection? Will this be your day of salvation? Today, you have a personal invitation from Jesus Christ to accept Him as your personal Savior. Will you take Him up on that wonderful invitation tonight? Well, Pastor, I, I don't know how. I'm, just, I'm, I'm about to explain to you exactly how to do it. It's very simple. First, admit you've sinned. Romans 3 and 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Right. Secondly, very importantly, believe on Jesus. Yep. Acts 16 and 31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. No matter what you've done, no matter where you are, no matter how bad you think you've been, you believe on Jesus tonight and he will forgive you. And you can become a child of God. Thirdly, you have to confess that Jesus is Lord. Confess your sins. Accept His forgiveness. Commit yourself. Commit your life to following Jesus. Romans 10 and 9 says this. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and if you will believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Listen to me tonight. It doesn't matter how many people has told you that Jesus will not forgive you. They're lying to you and he will forgive you. What a better time during Passion Week, during Holy Week, to ask him for his forgiveness, to accept it and to become a child of God. What a better time is now you will be saved. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, if there's one under the sound of my voice who does not know you or have not come into you as a personal relationship with you, I pray this miracle of salvation will be upon them. I pray that they will receive this salvation tonight. Lord, Please take up residence in their hearts today. Give them the courage today to accept you as their personal Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Tonight, Jesus went to the cross for you and I. He chose to go there to do something for us that we cannot do for ourselves. So as Brother Brad comes tonight, I just simply ask you that if you need prayer, call this church, 868-5806, 229-868-5806. Call this church and somebody will pray with you. Text us on Facebook. Reply to this message on live stream. Somebody will pray for you because God is in the prayer answering business. And tonight, Jesus is opening the doors again and calling you, saying, come home, my child. It's time to come home. I love you. Remember to that.
He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. God is bigger than all your problems. He's bigger than everything. Lean on Him. Trust in Him. And you will be blessed. In Jesus' name. shut in and shut away from God. Some of us say, well, I'm ready to get back in church. And as he was preaching, I got to thank him about the nails that was driven to his hand. And, and you know, this day and time, we don't have to suffer that kind of death for our sin because he done it for us. Right. Amen. And I want you to know tonight that your distance from your church or your home church or wherever you go may feel like it's a long ways. But I want you to know that the Holy Spirit can assail right down to your room tonight. He yes. may be speaking to some of you just as Pastor said. Yes, amen. And I believe as there Jesus made that step with that cross every step he took. He never once said this distance is too far to carry. He said he turned it all the way with him. When he got down, they laid him down on the cross and they drove those nails in his hand for you and I. Again, as Pastor said, if, if you need prayer, if you, you need somebody to talk to, you, maybe you don't understand what's going on. You've seen many, many words of God being preached the last couple of weeks. And if you don't know about this Jesus thing or you don't understand it, you need somebody to talk to. You, you call us. We'll make time for you. You reach out to us. Um, and I, I'm sure Pastor Danny don't mind, but if you, you don't want to talk to me or, my, or anyone at the church, you reach out to him on his Facebook page at Danny Joyner, and he'll be more than glad to talk to you. I thank God for each one of you. We love you. We're praying for you. And I want to tell you something. God is good. He is so great and wonderful. I miss you guys. I can't wait to see you again. But instead of praying for the church to go back to normal ways, I ask you to pray for it not to be normal anymore. We want better than normal. We got too comfortable with normal. We want to refresh, to renew the anointing in the church. A newfound power in the church. People hungry for God like they've never been before. Pray and seek God in that because I believe when the doors is open, I truly believe that Sunday morning there won't be no preaching because there's going to be too much shouting and praising to God. And I thank God for that. And I believe it's going to last for weeks on end. I don't think it's just going to stop on that Sunday morning. I thank Pastor Daniel for taking the time to bring the word today. Y'all pray for our district pastors because trust me, he has been on many phone calls. I've talked to him off and on and I don't think his phone is quit ringing. He said he retired, but I think he just stepped into a newer and busier position this month. We thank God for each one of our district pastors and our bishops and all of them. They truly are a blessing and they have a hard job. Um, please remember all of that's on our prayer list. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and as we bring this sermon to a close. If there's anyone that needs to speak to someone about Jesus, that don't understand it, but want to know Him, and want to get to know Him. Father, give them the strength to pick up their phone and text or call or reach out to someone that can help them. Father, we praise You for each one sitting under the sound of our voices tonight. God, we pray for a blessing over them and their family, and we pray that You cover each and every one with the walls of protection from this virus. God, let it not enter, and we plead the blood of Jesus over each one of them. We praise You for all of them, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Love you guys. Y'all have a blessed night. Remember, Easter's coming. Our God is risen.